Greetings, everybody. I'm Pastor Lachey. And, and I am Lady Eva. We're excited to be with you. The month of February is traditionally Love Month around here and many other places. And so there's probably tons and tons of content being produced right now around love because of February. But we also share um, Black History Month yes. in the month of February. So we're going to be talking about relationships in general. I know that we've got um, the focus on love and the focus on marriage and the focus on dating and sweethearts and Valentine. But I think it's important for us where we are right now in the body of Christ to spend some time talking about relationships in general. This entire month is dedicated to that. So every Wednesday night online here in our Wednesday night series, we're going to be talking about relationships. In fact, it's called the Relationship Talk Series. Right, right, right. You definitely want to be a part. So don't forget to tune in. And we're going to cover a lot of topics. You know, without um, relationships, there would be no love. <laughs> you know, it has to do with being connected. So we're going to talk about relationship, of course, from God's perspective, and then also talk about relationship with one another as far as whether you're married, whether you're single, or whether you're in between or otherwise. We'll talk a little bit about that. And then also talk about love from a deep perspective and then the responsibility of relationships. So yes. this is gonna be an exciting month and um, hopefully we'll be able to share our hearts uh, from a perspective that we both have, which often is the same, but True. the thing that's so great about it is often we have different perspectives. So I think that's gonna be important be to see perspectives, not just from a pastor and wife or two people who serve in ministry, but two individuals who've known each other a very long time, but also we've lived a little bit, so we've seen some things both individually and collectively inside the body of Christ and outside the body of Christ. So it's gonna be a really intense um, conversation. We would love to have some feedback or some talking points, at least by next week. We'll have right. some discussion points that we can talk to you about or answer some questions that you may have um, about relationships in general. We're gonna start with a word of prayer and then we'll go into tonight's discussion and we'll just call tonight's discussion Relationship 101. Okay. Um, we'll just do the basics. Do we get credit for it? Yeah, we get credit for okay. it. And, and you can, well, if you can pass the test. Uh, Let's pray. Uh, Father, we thank you for our time together and we thank you for Grace thank you Online. For All of our viewers and those who watch and participate around the world, we thank you for the Grace family. We ask your blessings upon this series and, and our conversation, our discussion, and, and, and even our enhancement on the things that we already know, but then also we're yielding to revelation of things that we do not know. Speak to us and speak clearly through us and get the glory in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, let's start with it. How would you really define the term relationship? I've got a perspective, but I want to hear your thoughts on, on relationship. Define. When I think of define, I think of definition. I think of what does Webster say? What does the Bible say? Um, but I'm just going to tell you what Eva says. Oh, wow. This so, is according to, to Eva. According to Eva. When I think of relationship, I just think of the interaction between two individuals, or, and I also think about communication and how you, because I don't want to define a word with the word relate, just how we interact with mm -hmm. one another on, on various levels. So it's just a matter of interaction. I like that. You mentioned between two individuals, I would even venture to say, and this um, lessens the impact of a one-on-one -on -one relationship and just simply says a relationship could involve two or more people. Oh, absolutely. Because a family is a relationship, uh, a church group is a relationship, the coworkers that you go to work with, those are relationships. And I think that if we can get to the bottom, to the crust, as they would say, the crux of a definition, it might be easier for us to respect things as such. Um, if relationship is interaction, like you said, um, there's both the natural as well as the spiritual aspect of that. What are, you, what are your thoughts about the spiritual relationship between things. For example, a bad dream and you wake up in a cold sweat. What's the relationship between the dream and the waking up from a spiritual perspective? It depends. What did you eat the night before? <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> no. Oh, actually, from, from what I um, recall, like with, I can only speak for myself as spiritual dreams. Or actually, I can speak with people that have shared with me. Um, that sometimes you may be seeking God for something and oftentimes God will use a dream to speak to you. And sometimes people get confused on that. They don't know if that's themselves talking or if that's God's talking. And the way you discern that really goes back to your relationship with God. Go. So that when whatever connection or interaction, from what I understand, whatever connection or interaction I have, 
um, I'm if I'm close to closer to God or close to God, it's usually easier for me to discern and to understand what God is saying to me, or if that dream was more natural. Um, you know, because of maybe something I ate or something I watched on sure. TV. So relationship, again, I talked about it just being part of interaction. And so to determine whether a dream is spiritual or natural, often, yes, sometimes you can go to other people um, to ask, you know, because there are some people that have the gift of discernment, but there are many times you can go to God yourself and the block of not getting an answer or not knowing um, may be based on your relationship sure. with God. Well, that's really what I was getting at. It, it's not so matter much the dream or whether it was spiritual or natural, right. but the discernment and the relationship with God is what determines our ability to understand. So relationships not only are interactive, but they are also opportunities for understanding. So I'm just kind of building some principles as we discuss this in our dialogue in Relationship 101. Somebody who might just be tuning in, we're spending the next four weeks talking about relationship from the general perspective to the specific. We're gonna get into marriage, we're gonna get into boyfriend, girlfriend stuff, sibling relationship, uh, correlationship. When I say correlation, how do we correlate our work with our passions for life. Um, so relationship is not just some small word that is right. defined by two people coming together that ultimately end in marriage or begin in marriage. It's all, yeah, not only that, but it's also very fluid because often like when you ask, you know, you ask me, you know, what is the definition of relationship? That's my definition. Yep. You know, somebody yep. else may have another definition and it doesn't make it right or wrong. It is determined based on from your perception, based on your perspective. And so I think that is what the key is too, that often when we're talking about relationships, we're trying to get a key point to be defined, this is what it is, yeah. as opposed to just exploring and just allowing it you know, to you know, occur, especially when you're talking about in between you know, humans. Because some people, they say they have a relationship with their pet. You know, and yeah. it's just a matter of... And they do. About, if, they if do, if you think about it, I they say interact interaction. with their pet, <laughs> they're, they're learning their pet, yes. their pet is learning them. Then we have to start qualifying it even more. What's a love relationship? There's and some people we, that love their pets. <laughs> there are people who love their pets. Yes. Um, but it can't be the same type of love that that we have for a for human. human. And I might it might create some challenges with somebody right. because it says, "Oh, I love my pet like it was a human." There is a difference between a four-legged creature that God creates and the two-legged creature that has yes. the intellect, the heart, the mind, and the capacity to exude God. While we can get love from a stuffed animal or living animal, we really cannot get the interaction of a love relationship unless there's another human right. involved. So we are putting parameters. Because I can't love my car like I would love my wife right. Right. or my sister or right. a brother. So we're putting parameters on it. So our discussion is about relationships between two human beings. There we go. Or relationship of, as you mentioned um, earlier, a group of individuals. Because like I said, we do throw the word love around um, a lot of times, like I try and I bring this up often, I, I try to remove the statement of when my job. I, I don't want to say I love my job, but I like my job a lot. You but can I love don't your want, job, but it just won't be the same as a human it won't love. Be, it won't be the same as human love, but I try to make that distinction, you yeah. know, so I'm very careful um, in the last years of how I use that word love, sort of like... I love um, pizza. Right. <laughs> I don't say I don't love pizza. Sort of pizza. like the way when we were coming up as kids, or I know my mom when I was coming up as kids, you know, you just couldn't throw the word friend around. Right. You know, one of my mother's right. famous quotes was, Everybody ain't your friend. <laughs> I think every you know? mother in the world has probably said that. Every father, too. Right. Be careful because everybody's not your friend. Right. And so I think about that with love. I think about that with love that we should be careful in relationship, the, just throwing the word love around, or even if we do use it, to define it or to qualify sure. it because there are different levels. This is some good stuff. So we have the foundation of love, excuse me, of relationship being interactive. Right relationship, of course, being informative or being able to communicate knowledge or understanding, but then also relationship between humans right. being something that could be built upon the principles of love. You don't have to love your job, but you can love the people at your job or you can love your job. There's nothing wrong with expressing a certain amount right. of like right. that we call love. But if we're going to really get into the understanding of relationship, we have to start with the understanding that God's desire is to have relationship with humanity, with all of humanity. John 3 and 16 tells us that he loved 
uh, us so much that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes on him will not perish but have everlasting life. Now, if we think about it, there's three dynamics of relationship in just that verse of scripture alone. God, who is our father, our relationship with God is that he's the creator who loves us and he loves us so much that he gave his son. That's another dynamic or relationship. So if we're the children of God and he gave his son, who is the son of God, that means now we have a brother relationship or a sibling relationship with Jesus Christ because of the father's love. So that's three dynamics of relationship right. that we just captured in one verse of scripture because if relationship is just about me and you having children and then them having children right. and them having children, that's a familiar relationship, family. Right. But if we talk about the relationship you have with a coworker or the relationship right. that you have with, um, let's say food, I have a relationship with food that I've used a conscious effort to, to clean that up and make that healthier. Right. One of my statements is, you know, God has given me a healthy relationship with right. food and I make wise choices. But I was just thinking about, well, something else you had mentioned that just kind of like triggered in my mind um, when you were talking about, because I had started out relationship as individual and you said expanded, um, you were talking about as far as from a group, but even when you use the scripture of John three sixteen, that, you know, God so loved in the world that he gave his son, his son is an individual, but yet it was for the whole world. world. And so yeah. I think that that was something that you tapped into that, that I think we'll be able to discuss um, mm -hmm. even greater the fact of, even though they're individual relationships, they are also group relationships. Cause I think about in areas spiritually with the body of Christ, we are, the, the sons and daughters of God being part of Christ as individuals, but we become the body of Christ as collective together. And that's one of the, the, the mysteries of God. Yeah. The fact I individually um, accept Christ and makes a determination on, you know, my, my eternity life. But then yet I still have a responsibility to relate with others as collectively. And that's what makes me the body. Yeah. So I think that's too with relationships. I'm a one on one. I operate I, from my perspective. Mm -hmm. I operate better in a one on one relationship. And so sometimes I don't look at the collective or the group relationship. I tend to shy away from the entire group. But then I'm missing out on some fulfillment there. Sure. And so I think that's something that I we have to take needed. into perspective. They're both needed. Yeah, if, it, it is. They personally, are. I believe that one of the the basic needs, and this isn't on Maslow's hierarchy of needs. So it's on Terrence well, Laws. It is Terrence Laws. Um, I guess acceptance and belonging is on Maslow's hierarchy right. of need, but it goes beyond that when we talk about relationship as Christians or as believers advancing the kingdom of God. That is a primary basic principle that we need to have, we need to understand. Right. Because if we can't look beyond just ourselves, or if we can't look just beyond the one on one, and not look at the big picture, we could miss something, but we could also be missing out on what we have been called to do in this world. So we have to look at relationship right. through a lens, like a camera lens that gives you a pan, large pan shot, and then a focus shot as well, depending on the circumstances. I, I love what you just said about um, having an individual relationship with God. And I think that that's vertical. Absolutely. I think that's a vertical relationship, me and God, God and me. But there's also this horizontalness to the cross. So right. the cross that Jesus died on is both vertical and horizontal. That is, that is so key what you're saying there. And I think sometimes we, as part of the body of Christ, we don't realize that. I remember sharing with an individual and they were sharing with me, you know, their phenomenal relationship with God. And they were just going on and on about how they hear God's voice and how um, God tells them this and God tells them that. Mm -hmm. And that um, they know for sure that this is what God, you know, called them to do. And I, you know, listened and I was, you know, thinking, they'll say, now, why are we meeting again? And what they wanted to meet with it, me with is because they just don't get along with people. And so wow. um, I, I, it was, that's interesting because when you think of relationship in the body of Christ, we really have to question how well we are in tune to who God is if out him. of the same voice we can share and say vertically, I love God, but horizontally, I don't want to deal with people. Yeah. You know, and so that's that, a challenge. It is. It is a challenge. Typically, you know, we can go to, to this as, as part of a reality discussion. Sometimes people are hurt. 
Yes. And you know, we often say that hurt people hurt people, but some people get hurt and then avoid people. Right. And it's one thing to be an introvert or an extrovert or, or a right. selectrovert. It's, it's one thing to be those things, but it's another thing to have wounds and scars that pro prevent us from having true, good, wholesome relationships. I think one of the greatest losses in the Garden of Eden was the dynamic of relationship with God, right. but also relationship with each other. Right. When Adam and Eve had the experience of being uh, tempted and then deceived by Satan, what was at stake was relationship going forward, right. all relationship. Relationship well, between God and humanity, relationship between a mother and their child, relationship between a husband and his wife, a relationship between humanity and animals. I mean, we didn't have to right. fight and beat down beasts and animals prior to the fall. All of those things hinge upon relationship. It does. And even thinking about when you're going back to the garden, talking about Adam and Eve, I, I think about when you hear this often, we hear people preach on it, we hear people talk about it, you know, that, you know, Eve was, you know, disobedient, it was, you know, her fault. And then some people say, well, no, Adam was responsible, it was his fault. But based on what you're saying, the relationship between Adam and Eve, because when we listen to the scripture, he was there when she when she ate because she gave to her husband that was with her and so i when you based on what you're saying when i think back on that what about if their relationship was more to where they were looking out for one another right you know to where he could have helped her it's like ah, that, that, that's not what god right. said right. or she you know could have even you know helped him in the fact of knowing what he told her god said and not going forth and not going forth and, and being disobedient yeah. so i just think about relationships like even in from the beginning of time that was an opportunity to where what was it about that relationship that um we did not cover each other mm -hmm. of her not being deceived and then him not being disobedient along with her i think one of the things we outlined in the last um talk is the responsibility yes the stewardship of relationship yes that, that's an excellent example kind of moving so forward I, so you said i leaped all the way to the fourth <laughs> to, to, the, to the fourth, the fourth to the, the fourth five, discussion the we're gonna stewardship wrap this one up relationship. um the stewardship yeah, yeah. And, and when we think about it the relationship that we have with people places and things stewardship right. oftentimes determines our success or failure if i am a poor steward over my love relationship or the dynamic of marriage i suffer the consequences if I'm a poor steward over my parental relationships, yeah. I'm a bad dad or a bad parent, then I run the risk of losing the love of my children and hurting them, and then they in turn will be wounded or hurt right. or scarred. I mean, think about relationship. Everything hinges on a relationship that starts first with God and then also with what God created and who God created. And, and even when you, you mentioned relationship as far as the relationship you mentioned were like blood relationships or even covenant. Even with our brothers and sisters, you know, we are still in covenant relationship. I think about when we're talking about relating one-on-one um, -on -one and it's the interaction with one another, uh, a phrase just popped in my head and I've said it, you know, myself, but there is no biblical um, support of that. You Let's know, try me. I'm going to see if I can find it. a okay. scripture to go with it. <laughs> no biblical support of it because it's really not in a positive sense. When so you this, see, is the this is an evism? This is an When When you in a relationship with someone and you know um, that there's something that you can share, but yet for whatever reason you don't, and I, people have said this phrase, well, you on your own. Wow. But if you think about it in relationship with individuals, in a relationship with each other, are we ever really on our own? We're not. And that's what I'm saying. There's I can find two scriptures to go with it. Okay, there's One scripture tells us that no man lives unto himself nor yes, dies, no unto, dies himself. unto himself. Whether we live or die, we are the Lord's. That's one scripture. No man is an island. It's right. preceded with that. And then the other scripture that comes to mind is the scripture that speaks specifically about us knowing to do good and not doing so is evil. Right. It's just as evil as if we've committed a sin. So for me to withhold assistance, help, or support from right. another person, regardless of my relationship with them, I am now walking a thin line of being like the world or right. being like somebody right. who has not been 
conform to the image of Christ. Now I'm, that's what's yeah. so key. You said you were walking a thin line of being like the world because that's not that's not God's character. God right. is very intentional about us, and so we have to be intentional about each other. And mm -hmm. I think all of us in the body of Christ, you know, oftentimes we, for me, I know sometimes I step back for the fact I'm, I am what you call risk averse. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I do do a lot. And that's based I, on, I am doing like calculated based risk on based experience, on experiences, yeah, based on, you know, people. like had I, I, if I knew now what I knew then, <laughs> you know, knew then and I wouldn't have, you know, went that route. And so sometimes when we're risk adverse and because we don't want to connect in certain, um, you know, relationships or, you when we allow people, or you on your own, or that particular sense, we miss out on the opportunity to be that that connection for someone, or be that answer for someone. It makes me think about how many times have individuals, even myself, prayed to God for an answer, and He gave the response to somebody else, but because. I'm not in a relationship with you or I don't want to take that risk. And I'm not just talking about marital sure. relationships or You're, kids. Yeah. I'm talking about brothers and sisters that I don't intentionally step up and be vulnerable for the sense um, I don't want to be hurt or the sense I don't want to deal with your drama. Yeah. But yet God may have given me through love the really answer that you've been asking for, but wow. because I don't want to be in relationship with you, you're still there asking God for an answer when he yeah. gave it to us through each other. Yeah, and I believe that that's, that was the fall of man, but that's right. also the redemption of man. The, the, the fall of man was through that dynamic of three people, three entities were present in the garden when that, when that fall right. happened. There was Adam, Eve, and you know, Satan himself. And if the dynamic or relationship or the responsibility of the relationship were different, we'd have a different outcome. Right. But what I really love, and as we wrap this up, I really love the fact that God preceded all of that with not a remedy, but with a plan. Right. And God's plan, the plan of God for humanity is steeped in relationship. It is. In relationship with Him. Him and each and other. And then each other. Because without the relationship with each other, we can't express our relationship with him. We can't. It's one-sided. It, we can't, or or we can't even express it in the sense of how God created it because he even shares with us that you can, how can you love God who you've never, never seen, seen and not love your brother? Who and you see every day. We'll, who you see every day. And we'll talk about this later. You cannot love someone without being in a relationship because there are some sure. things that are the responsibility of love. And wow. we'll talk about that in some of our you know, later sessions. But this for tonight, yeah. the uh, relationship of interaction as far as one-on-one -on -one as well as collective is I'm hoping that we will kind of like change our perspective yeah. on relationship, the fact that it is necessary and that we do have to be intentional and it is something that God wants for us even if we don't want it for ourselves. It's mm -hmm. something we should seek out to do. You so you got so much wisdom. You just full of Whatever. Wisdom. <laughs> We're gonna be wrapping up right now, but um I, I think out of tonight we learned that relationship is interactive. Yes. That relationship is informative, but relationship is also conditional to how we perceive our connection to God. And it's individual as well as collective. Right, the horizontal and the vertical yes. love. When we pick this up next week, in addition to comments that may come in, we're gonna talk um, a little bit about the dynamics of different types of relationships. Single, married. Married or other. But, <laughs> but we also have to talk about the stages of relationship. Yes. When we were born, we were born into a relationship physically, when we were physically born, and there are stages that we go through, and there's a pinnacle, and there's probably a decline of relationship as well. So we'll talk a little bit about that. Maybe you can close this out in prayer. I don't know if you have any other, other words, but I think we've uh, kind of hit our time mark for tonight. No, I'm just looking forward to just diving in deeper, and, I, and it's our hope that when we finish this series that we all will have a new perspective or relationship, but not just have a new perspective, but be intentional yeah. on bridging some of the gaps in some of our relationships. So let's pray. Mm -hmm. Father, we thank you for this day. Thank you for the opportunity to uh, minister and talk to one another as we share um, with um, the body of Christ. So Father, open up our hearts and open up our minds and allow our uh, spirit man and our, our mind and our will and our emotions to embrace 
the relationships that you have for us and to define as well as redefine our relationship with others in the name of your precious son Jesus we pray and the church said amen amen